Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 147. We're going to slide back down to the Virgin Islands and learn a little bit about what came out today in probate court. We know that the battle is on for Jeffrey Epstein's estate down there. We know that Denise George is neck deep in it. And we know that the lawyers of the survivors are doing their best to try and make sure that this money goes to them. Well, today in probate court, we have an accounting of exactly what Jeffrey Epstein owned, meaning what sort of property, what his companies were worth, if he had any cars, etc., etc. So again, like I always say, this is what he had on paper, right? This is the stuff that he declared. We know that he was neck deep in money laundering. We know that he was hiding funds. And we know that he was steering business to personal banks like J.P. Morgan and Jess Staley. So my question always is with that sort of thing, when he was steering that business towards Staley or, or, you know, JP Morgan or, you know, Deutsche Bank, any of these organizations, my question is, why was he steering the money that way? What was he getting in return? Now, I'm sure he was getting some points on it, right? Some percentage points. And we know that if he was collecting points on that, it was on the cuff. He wasn't doing that and declaring that for the IRS to see. So that those funds wouldn't even be on paper. That's the sort of stuff that would be buried in, you know, all these offshore accounts that I'm positive that he has somewhere. And who knows who has access to those accounts. That might be what that, Ghislaine might have access to those accounts or Jean-Luc Brunel. Who knows? I certainly don't have evidence, pro, you know, pointing in that direction. But at this point, you would have to think as close as Epstein and Maxwell were, perhaps that money that they were getting from steering business to these You know, these private banks, again, I don't have evidence of this, folks. This is a theory. Uh, The money that they were getting from steering these private bank, these of this um, business towards the private banks then was going into these secret bank accounts for them to use. God forbid they had to go on the lam or something like that. And that could be where Ghislaine Maxwell is drawing this money from. Yeah, look, that it's it, it, that's a theory of mine. I have no idea if it's true, right? I can't prove it one way or the other. But you would think that Epstein would was certainly making a percentage for steering that money somewhere. I mean, for steering that money uh, to these private bankers like Jess Staley. And then on the flip side of that, well, you th- he has to stash that money somewhere. There were the, he doesn't have shoe boxes under his bed. I mean, at least I don't think so. Nobody's ever said that. Shoebox full of money. But so he has to stash it somewhere, right? And we know he's not going to do it in a in a area where he has to declare it for the IRS so they they can audit him and try and find out where the money came from. He has no time for that. So you know he had offshore accounts somewhere. My question is, where are the forensic accountants? Why aren't there forensic accountants all over this? And I know that forensic accountants work. I, I Believe me, I definitely know that they, they do a good job and they will trace that money down. But again, just like with the RICO charges, I'm left, I'm left wondering why there's no forensic accountant involved. And if there is one, how come we haven't heard about it? So this article, the headline is, What Did Jeffrey Epstein Own? Here's a full tally including cash, islands, and a 64 dune buggy. Again, I think it's hard to say. It's a hard sell to say a full tally. My whole entire little rant just a second ago obviously was talking about this. There's no way that I think that we know exactly what Epstein owns or what he has uh, as far as assets stashed away. There's just It's impossible to find that out at this point unless, of course... They bring in Ghislaine Maxwell, and like I've always I've always said, I believe she holds the keys to the kingdom. So if you bring her in, then all bets are off. Maybe they'll get access even to these hideaway accounts that they have uh, offshore and in different places. But besides that, I think it would be it's almost impossible at this point to track down these accounts without forensic accountants and probably a whole team of them. This article was written by Kevin G. Hall. And uh, yeah, here we go. Disgraced financier, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein's estate has been officially valued at $636.1 million according to a new 
verified inventory filed Friday in his probate case in the Virgin Islands. Verified inventory filed, huh? Verified as in the estate told you this is what they have? Or verified in you had forensic accountants? Again, they don't give us all of the details. And that, that's sort of frustrating sometimes because they, you know, you're stuck. You're like, all right, well, what the hell? He, you know, how is it verified? What makes it verified? How did you verify this? Did you go through the process and tell us how it's been verified. But... I guess that's not important enough for them to discuss. Epstein's finances, once the subject of mystery and speculation, are being laid bare as various parties, including those who were sexually abused by the multimillionaire, pedophile, stake their claims to a portion of his assets. Good. This is good. This is good stuff. Let's make sure that everything that's on paper, everything that's been declared, let's make sure it's all out in the open so that there can be uh, no grifting, so there could be no stealing, so that everybody understands that when this estate does get pieced off and sold f- so that this, the survivors can have uh, their, their reparations for what they've been through, then there's no BS saying, well, this wasn't involved in the case or this wasn't involved in the case. This isn't, you know, we didn't declare this and you have no rights to this. So let's get it all out on the table and let's see what's what. That way there can be no sidestepping or backstepping later on when it's time to come pay the bill. The 100-page document from Epstein's estate included a listing of 15 wholly-owned limited liability companies which are designed to disclose little public information and were valued at $201.5 million. See, this is what I'm talking about. The estate included a listing. So the estate's only letting us know what they want us to know, what has already been discovered. It's not like the estate's going to say, well, he had 45 offshore accounts as well with, you know, $600 million in them. Of course, they're not going to say that, especially Indyke and Khan. We, they, they certainly aren't reliable players in this whole entire thing, especially according to Denise George, right? She definitely doesn't think that they're uh, reliable. And me, personally, I don't think any of them are reliable. I don't, I don't trust George either. I'm on record saying that. But I certainly don't trust Indyke and Khan. I mean, those are the guys that are going to come forward and give us a full accounting of what the estate has in its possession, what Jeffrey Epstein had in his possession on the time of his death. I mean, come on. It is absolutely positively ridiculous to think that we're going to believe that. It's Again, it's another instance of the investigators investigating themselves. How, how do they think anyone's going to believe that these days? It's the year 2020. All right, we have the internet. Everybody's connected. Nobody need nobody's believing your narratives anymore. These LLCs include Southern Financial LLC, valued at just under 180 million dollars. The company was not described and does not appear to have been referred to in any prior documents. A footnote said the entity will be appraised and an updated value will be provided upon co- completion. Uh, again, This is another front company. It's obvious Southern Financial LLC. Yeah, right. Southern money laundering, you mean? (laughs) Come on. This is like, it's like Walter White buying the, uh, the car wash. It's obvious what these front companies are. Why are none of these people calling them out on it and, and calling it for what it is? You know, just, just be honest. It's obviously a front company. Epstein was obviously laundering money. This is obviously, this was obviously an ongoing criminal, uh, conspiracy. And this is, has all the hall, hallmarks and this should be a RICO case, but it's not yet. And it's very funny to me that it's not. And you have Denise George, who's talking a good game, but has yet to drop one single RICO indictment on anybody. It was not clear if the company was connected to Southern Country International, an Epstein company whose existence was first revealed by McClatchy, Miami Herald. A subsequent New York Times story determined it was a new, one-of-a-kind bank in the Virgin Islands that could do business only with offshore clients. Although Epstein owned the bank, it did not appear in the public-facing online licensing registries in the Virgin Islands. Yeah, and that just happened out of the blue, right? Epstein was able to just do that all on his own. Nobody that was in a position of power in the Virgin Islands assisted. Nobody in the Virgin Islands, because of the money they were getting from Jeffrey Epstein, facilitated this. 
and, you know, according to Denise George, she's not looking at any of that. It's all about the estate, a.k.a. all about the money, not about the justice. If Denise George cared about the justice, she would be going after the people that facilitated these sort of front companies in the Virgin Islands. And until she does that, until she drops RICO indictments, then I will continue to believe that she is simply after a payday for the Virgin Islands. The inventory did not say if Southern Financial connected in any way with similar with uh, with named ent- with other named entities that were similar. The vagueness is why both the Virgin Islands Attorney General and the judge there overseeing the settlement of Epstein's estate have complained about too many blacked out names and too many estimated values. Uh, what did the, I don't even understand what that means. The judge complained and and Denise George complained. So what, the estate is running the show? Shouldn't the judge step in and put a stop to it? Uh, judge Preska sure has no problem sticking her, you know, getting involved in the case. So what, this judge doesn't want to step in and tell the estate we need to see everything unredacted? What does this mean? Blacked out names, estimated values. This is a court of law. If it were you or I, we better come with all of our T's crossed and our I, and our I's dotted. All right, because if not, well, they're going to find a way to throw us in prison. All right, and, but if you're one of these people, if you're, you know, Epstein or his, you know, his estate or Indyke or Khan, you just you you make the terms to the court and you drop the terms to the court and you say, look, this is what we're doing. I'm going to redact these names, et cetera, et cetera. So what are you going to do about it? Meanwhile. The court, if that was me, if I was the judge and someone brought in blacked, blacked out names and estimated values, I would throw it in their face and tell them to bring me the correct stuff or I'm going to start holding people in contempt for wasting my time. I mean, these ju- all these judges act like mini dictators in their courtrooms when it comes to somebody who's in front of them for, you know, drugs, but yet it comes to human trafficking and, you know, uh, powerful so-called elites, and they tiptoe around and they act like they have no power. Well, they only have power when they want to throw one of us, the regular people in prison, I guess. In fact, concern about how funds were being documented in Epstein's estate led to Attorney General Denise George placing liens on the, on the estate. Just last week, the executors of the estate complained in a court filing that checks were beginning to bounce because of the liens. And like I said, folks, when I was just in Santa Fe, I was at the front gate of Zorro Ranch for over four, eh, about 40 minutes. I don't want to say over 40 minutes, but right around there, 40 minutes. And I didn't see not another human soul. There was nobody working. Nobody came out to challenge me. So maybe the, with the liens, they're not able to pay the people who are supposed to take care of these properties at this point. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it, all, I, all I can say is I didn't see anybody at the ranch and nobody came out to challenge me for hanging out in the, the driveway like that or or anything. So maybe the liens are actually... Uh, are actually working and they're not lying, meaning the executors aren't lying about not being able to pay the bills. And if not, that's good because I don't want any more of that money siphoned off anyway. And unfortunately, Denise George wants the liens on the estate. She doesn't want the money siphoned off. That's because she wants to make sure the the Virgin Islands gets their cut. Epstein's estate includes 10 corporate entities that were wholly owned by him, valued at $426.2 million. The most valuable corporate entity was Southern Trust Company, incorporated at $233.6 million. This was the Virgin Islands entity that received lucrative tax breaks for 10 years in exchange for creating the purported data mining company. Again, how is Denise George not looking into the people who facilitated all of this? Aren't they culpable? Aren't they involved? I mean, they're the ones that allowed this to occur. They're the ones that let him get these uh, licenses. They're the ones that let these businesses open. They're the ones that turned the other way while these women and these children were being abused on their island. And now Denise George thinks that she's going to come forward and be the shining hero in this story, the shi- the knight riding the, you know, the, the, the white knight in shining armor that comes to save the damsel in distress. There's no way. We're not, I'm not buying it. Uh, you know, Denise George is, um, um, 
on the fence with her. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to completely throw her under the bus, but it does not look good. The evidence does not look good when it comes to Denise George and what her motivations are. Because if she was serious, like I said, there'd be Rico, there'd be Rico charges and all of the people, all of the officials from the Virgin Islands that were involved in any of this would at the very least be subpoenaed and brought forward. And unless those two things occur, well, I just, I really don't have any faith that, that uh, Attorney General George, that her motivations are in the right place here. I, I really believe that all she cares about, and don't get me wrong, I shouldn't say all she cares about, but I believe her number one worry is that the Virgin Islands gets a chunk of this change when it should be that the survivors get justice. Attorney General George brought a civil enforcement action last month in the Virgin Islands against the Epstein estate, expanding the action to include Southern Trust, claiming the executors of his will and his businesses were part of a criminal enterprise. She says it right there. Why is this not RICO? Slap them with RICO if you're serious. That's what you will do. Until then, well, like they say in the George R.R. R. Martin books, words are wind. Together, the two islands Epstein bought there, Little St. James and Great St. James, are respectively valued at $63.2 million and $23.4 million. George has placed a lien on them, hoping to claw them back for the Virgin Islands to redress alleged crimes and alleged misrepresentations to tax authorities there. Bam, right there, she says it, okay? They say it right here in the article. George has placed a lien on them, hoping to claw them back for the Virgin Islands to redress alleged crimes and alleged misrepresentations to tax authorities there. What an absolute joke. What an absolute joke. Again, my gut feeling is correct in this case. Again, unfortunately, I was correct. She does not care about the survivors. If she did, it would have nothing to do with the Virgin Islands clawing them back. That's what the lean's about, folks, okay? Nobody's going to tell me any differently at this point. You know, I was willing to give her the benefit of the, the, the doubt until I just read a little further and read that. And you know what? I'm not willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. She's not a good player in this, in my opinion. And her, her motivations are wholly to try and get money for the Virgin Islands, who's in, in her world she believes was wronged somehow. When in reality, the Virgin Islands... The, the officials were stupid and greedy enough to take Epstein's money and look the other way. All right, how about you start blaming those officials as well? All right, Epstein's gone. Instead of leveling you know, your finger at everybody else, Miss George, why don't you go after the people who are running free on your island this very minute who facilitated this behavior, who were part of this ongoing criminal enterprise, who received funds from this ongoing criminal enterprise? But instead, you're going to focus on just the islands. On that, That's all you care about. You want to get those back so you can sell them off so that you and your buddies can get a little piece of that probably as well. I'm sorry, but the Virgin Islands is absolutely corrupt in my opinion, and I don't trust anything going on there. In a section of the filing dealing with the company formed in relation to his purchase of the Great St. James holding, the estate blacked out large portions of information about another person associated with it. It is unclear why. A story about McClatchy, Miami, a story by McClatchy, Miami Herald last October documented irregularities associated with Epstein's acquisition of his second island. Yeah, it was bought under the net some uh, some Saudi Arabian guy's name. So uh, I forget the name right now. It escapes me and I don't have it in front of me, but that's definitely odd, right? Why would Epstein be purchasing an island under somebody else's name? And why would the gentleman from Saudi Arabia be even be involved in that? Again, what do you have to gain? What is coming your way? What is your motivation for doing something like that? You know, it's, it's beyond me. I just don't understand how, how anyone could, uh, could, could could be involved in it. I just, I just, it's just so foreign to me. Just so absolutely foreign to me. So, all right, let's see, where was I? Epstein was found dead on August 10th in the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Manhattan, where he was awaiting trial after a series of events that followed the Miami Herald's Perversion of Justice investigative series. The death was ruled a suicide, allegedly. Oh, boy. 
Epstein's property in France, where authorities are looking into his business associates, was valued at around $9.8 million and included cash on hand there. I don't believe that there's an investigation going on in France. Where's Jean-Luc Brunel? We haven't heard anything about him since like October. So you're telling me a guy who runs a modeling agency can just disappear in the wind? He can just go on the lam and nobody will, no, nobody knows where he is? But yet we can find some guy in a cave in Yemen or Afghanistan? Come on, give me a break. Who is hiding Jean-Luc Brunel? And what does he know? Another person that needs to be put to the question. The inventory did not place a value on the 50% stake in American Yacht Harbor owned by an Epstein entity, leaving that to a future appraisal. The other 50% stake in the Virgin Islands business belongs to a company controlled by New York-based Island Capital, whose chairman and CEO is mega developer, developer Andrew L. Farkas. The company's senior managing director, Mark P. Landy, appears in the 2019 annual reporting filing provided by the estate. So Andrew Farkas, who is the chairman, the CEO of Island Capital, I guess he needs some more looking into, folks, huh? Because if you're in business with Jeffrey Epstein, you are automatically on my radar. Another LLC called Plan D holds title to his 2007 Gulfstream, which had an insurable value of $17 million. The sum of Epstein's cash, said lawyers in the Virgin Islands and the United States in their verified inventory, was almost $7.6 million. The estate listed three vehicles worth $53,000, including a 1964 dune buggy. Not on that list, a late model Bentley that the estate said in its preliminary filing had been sold but did not indicate to whom or where. A similar make and model Bentley had been available for sale on the popular website CarMax at the time. Imagine you buy Jeffrey Epstein's uh, Bentley. That would be nice. You, don't have, you have no idea whose it is. Eventually you find out you're driving around in a convicted pedophile's Bentley. Oh boy, I'd burn it. I'd light it on fire. A footnote in Friday's report said a 2018 Mercedes Maybach located in Paris was sold for approximately $133,000 with proceeds placed in the estate's checking account. The estate's filing noted that Epstein's artwork, collectibles, jewelry, and watches had not yet been valued by appraisers. Well, I'll tell you what. He has a bunch of artwork. He has a bunch of jewelry. All of this stuff needs to be appraised. There needs to be a, an itemized list of what every what, of of uh, how much everything is worth, what it's been sold for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then it all needs to go into a trust until these survivors, their cases, work their way through court and they get what they deserve. And the Virgin Islands gets nothing, in my opinion. Okay, not one dollar. I would be livid. If I were the survivors of Jeffrey Epstein and I knew that the Virgin Islands and Denise George were trying to weasel their way in to make some money off of this when they all, all when all the officials were all they were already making money on the flip side. They should have never given these these people these tax havens. If they didn't give them the tax haven, they would have made a grip in tax dollars. But no, greed had to get in the way, right? Greed had to get in the way, and these local politicians took Jeffrey Epstein's money and looked the other way while he committed his terrible, horrible crime spree. And now they want to look like they're offended, like the island has been completely and utterly demeaned by Jeffrey Epstein. Well, I have to tell you, the island played a part, okay? I'm sorry, but that's the way I see it. The island played a part, and the island itself, the officials on the island, were all enabling this behavior. And for them to come out now and act like they're so offended by it, it just seems so disingenuous on its face. And it's such a... It's a tactical blunder for Denise George to think that this is a winning strategy. It's either that or she just doesn't care, right? She doesn't care what the public perception is. All she wants to do is get this money back so she looks like a hero. She probably has designs on another you know, political office, maybe run for, you know, whatever, the, a governor or mayor or whatever the highest office is on the island. I'm not really too sure how it goes down there. But who knows what her motivations are? I'll tell you this, though. It certainly doesn't seem like her motivations are the survivors making sure that they come out whole. That doesn't seem to be her motivation at all, folks. And it makes me agitated. All right, if you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com.
And if you would like to help support the podcast and you enjoy the content, you can click on the GoFundMe link inside of the description box. Also, if you have something you'd like to talk to me about as in regards to the case, if you're somebody that was affected by the case or you have some information about the case and you'd like to speak anonymously, please contact me and we'll work it out. I'll get you set up and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get talking. All right, everybody, I will see everybody, see everybody, I will talk to you all in the morning. I hope you all have a fantastic Friday night. And as usual, please, if you're going out and you're partying and you're having a good time, please do not drink and drive. All right, everybody, until the a.m., I will talk to you then.